Ah ho, silver! Away! Hey, you wanna do this vlog with me, Tonto? Hell no! Because I'm never supposed to take it off. But I know who you are. I'm the Lone Ranger. Yeah, I know. And I know you're also one cent more slash Doug Barry slash Go Ten Six. Uh, stop that! Stop that! <laughs> <sighs> anyway, so yes, we saw the Lone Ranger based on the old. Walt Disney sh show from the 1950s. And I have never seen a single episode and know very little about it. Yeah, I actually never saw this either. Like, I know the references. I know that it was like a big deal back in the day. Because, you know, Lone Ranger is like sort of the prototype for like the masked superhero in a way. It's next to, you know, the Marvel and DC characters. Um, other than that, though, like, I never actually watched an episode. I have, I have a friend, though, who has, so, and he was actually, he actually watched it with us, uh, when we saw the movie, so, he, he, he says that, like, there wasn't, like, much, it was just, you know, a fun western, pretty much. It kind of felt like that, I mean. Well, I mean, it's when westerns were big, yeah. and, you know, it's just, you know, good guy fights bad guy. You know, one on one fight in the middle of the sit of a town, like you know, a lot of predictable stuff. Well, yeah, but on the other hand, westerns have never really gone away. Not Granted, really. Yeah, not not in the sense of you know their popularity. I mean, they've waned, and you know, there's there are no longer really any western television shows. I mean, back in the day, there used to be like hundreds of them mm -hmm. and then um i guess when the space race started that sort of drew a lot of them to a close but a lot of them they lasted a long time mm -hmm. um there there is sort of a resurgence making its way and like you see uh a couple of television shows i think there's like one called longmire it's you know you, you're, you're sort of getting into the modern day western and, I mean, with, with movies, though, with movies, they never, I don't think they ever stop making westerns. No, not really. Like, they'll make the occasional western. They'll try to add a new twist to it and whatnot. Yeah, they usually at the same try time, to update it to the modern times, but... And they usually, and usually in more modern times, they try to make it a little more accurate. Like, when they show Indians, they don't show them as, you know stereotypical savages as they put it you know yeah. they try to like they of course try to portray a more accurate history like you know the prejudice against the indians and white men driving them off their land and everything so and and uh even cartoons have been sort of doing this too like uh was it rango i didn't even see rango like that that's what i think of when i think of a typical western because it does have a lot of the cliches it's just dumb um, animals but, uh, like I said, every year you get, like, one good Western. And I'm sorry to say, but this is not one of them. It's fun, but it doesn't really... For, for what it is, it's enjoyable, but it's not... It's not really great. I gotta say, I was kind of disappointed that it wasn't good, because, I mean, it's an interesting concept, because... I don't know if this was how it was in the original show, because I mean, I even did research, but I didn't really see anything on that. But the premise of the movie is uh, the Lone Ranger is this guy who starts off as a as a as a prosecutor who studies law, and he's all into the whole justice thing. Like he's a Boy Scout through and through, and he doesn't he he's so like hell bent on just the. Ju on you know bringing people to justice like the right way like making sure that you know, that you know the bad guy's always apprehended and gets his just desserts like he doesn't even carry a gun he doesn't want them to die right he wants them to see justice served through legal means not right. through uh one's own hand mm. 
Yeah. So kind of, I, I'll call it the Batman principle, pretty Almost. much. Um, so he get he gets sent out to the town where he grew up, out in the west, and uh, that's where his uh, his brother lives with his wife and his son. And along the way, uh, he on the tr the train he's riding gets apprehended by a bunch of bad guys because on the train is actually this really really serious bad guy uh butch i believe his name yeah, is yeah butch it's, it's sort of supposed to sound like bush butch cassidy but it's like the last it's a different name, name is, but yeah. he's like really bad news and he's being transported out to this town in the west in order to be hanged because he's not just a murderer but he's an indian killer too mm -hmm. so everyone wants him dead including but, the indian sitting right next to him right uh the indian stuck with him is uh tonto played by Johnny Depp, as you all know, and uh, his Butch's posse takes over the train and frees him. Uh, Lone Ranger, whose na real name is John Reed, tries to apprehend him, but again, you know, not having a gun and not believing in, you know, executing the guilty, uh, he... He fails. He, he kind of, yeah. He, he fails. He tries to apprehend the guy through legal means, that doesn't work. Uh, Tonto, uh, who is free during the process, tries to, like, kill the guy because he has a personal beef with him, but John <coughs> stops him from doing that, and they end up letting him escape, and the train ends up, like, go going into overdrive and totals the, uh, the railroad that's being constructed. But anyway, um, John gets in gets manages to get to the town he's supposed to get to and Tonto is apprehended by uh John's brother Dan who's leader of the Rangers that are out there. So and the Rangers they're basically like a private police task force in the town in a way I guess you can call that right. Mm -hmm. Um so they're they're base they hear that Butch has escaped so they make it their mission to go after him and they've actually been like trying to They've been going around trying to capture bad guys and everything, and of course, you know, going into Indian territory, making sure that none of the Indians attack the settlements, because they have a treaty going on right now, where if once, as long as each side do not attack the other, they'll be at peace. But, so. it's, it's apparently, word is that the, oh, what is the name of the, uh, the tribe? Um, it begins with a C, I believe. Um... Oh, it's gonna drive me crazy. I remember what the name of it is, and it's, it's like, like C H Chattanooga. No, it's like Conkichi. Was it? It's definitely like Con something. Yeah. But sorry it, about yeah, that. Sorry. <laughs> it's We're like on, it's like on the top of my head, and I can't remember exactly what it is. But the, regardless, the the tribe has been said. Like, it's rumored that the tribe has actually been, like, breaking the treaty and, uh, robbing, uh, settlements. settlements. Yeah. So, they're pretty much ready to declare war. Yeah, so, um, of course John wants to go after, uh, the bad guy as well, you know, because he believes in the whole justice thing and trying to get his man. So, so his they're deputized as he rangers. Yeah, Dan yeah. makes his brother an honorary honorary ranger, and along with five other members, they all head out into the desert to pursue him. Uh, unfortunately, along the way, as they're going through a cavern, they get ambushed. And Who I'm, didn't see that coming? But here's the thing. Every single one of them dies. Like, <laughs> every, yeah, every one of them. Even, like, even John and his brother. And, and some, well, it should also be noted that along the way, they saw a horse, a white horse, and uh, John's brother is, he's Comanche, Comanche was the tribe. Okay. Yeah, um, so he's incredibly, like, he's been with the Comanches, they know him, he, you know, he knows them, they actually, I believe they gave him, like, a pendant of some sort. Uh, so he's like, he knows their ways, he knows their stories, so he's like, you know, that that horse, that white horse is like a spirit. It's like, uh, like really important spirit. So, 
that horse shows up around the same time as Tonto has escaped from his prison. Somehow. And is, some would call it grave robbing. He's trading. Yeah. Um, oh, and before he comes along, though, there's this really gruesome scene. Like, I mentioned before about how this butch guy is bad news. Uh, here's exactly how fucked up this guy is. He comes across a dead body, because it turns out he paid off one of the rangers in order to, you know, basically kill the off, others. Yeah. And... So where they he, would be going. Because he has a personal grudge against Dan, the older brother, you know, for apprehending him, helping apprehend him in the first place. So as the guy is laying there, you know, bleeding from his bullet wound, dying, the guy says, you took, you took a year away from me, now I'm about to take away some for you. And the guy fucking cuts his heart out of his chest and eats it. Holy shit. I'm like, oh, God. And even his men are, like, grossed out by this. You see them vomiting in the background. It is so Like, literally, up. you see them vomiting. I know. They, they don't even, like, try to edit that out with, you know, him going, like, doubling over out of uh, out of the screen. They, like, literally show his vomit coming out of his mouth. I, I think we got yeah. the picture. Sorry. But, <laughs> but, yeah, so that gruesome thing happened. Like you said, Tonto comes along, and he digs a grave for all the men. And then in his typical fashion, I'm not, I don't want to say this is the same for all Indians, since... You know, the, it may they or could may not be, be different. Yeah, it could have different ways. But the way he yeah. he goes about it, he does grave rob them, but he trades. Like he takes like this canteen from this guy and he leaves him a feather, and then he. Uh, I think he takes the boots from one guy and leaves a bag of peanuts. Yeah, and yeah. for an, and for so and for someone else, uh, I think he takes like a bullet and he leaves like bird seed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, the bird seeds are big. It's a thing. Yeah. Well, we should also mention that um, there's something else going on every now and then. Is that the the movie starts out in San Francisco in 1933, and Tonto is in this like. Uh, history museum I want I, that that's really the only way thing to call it and this little kid comes by wearing a mask and he sees uh, the noble savage which is supposed to be like a display turns out it's really Tonto and Tonto is like telling him the story he has like a dead crow in his head and he keeps like mm. feeding it bird seed yeah, I didn't realize that, like, in seeing the trailers and everything, because his hair blends in really good with it, but yeah. Tonto wears a dead crow on yeah. his head for the entire movie, which he feeds. Yeah. And so, it's, yeah, like, it's really weird. Every now and then you, you cut to uh, the kid asking a question about the story that Tonto is telling in the present day. Like, the... the uh, yeah, I'll get I'll get yeah, to we'll my get to issue that. about that because that's a where, big where issue. Where our me. story actually is is in uh, Dallas, Dallas. Te it's in Texas in uh, eighteen sixty nine. Right. So yeah. Um, so so yeah, Tonto is starting to bury all of them, but then the white horse you mentioned shows up and stands in front of this one particular grave, and it's of John Reed. And Tonto takes it to mean that oh, this horse. Uh, wants to bring one of the rangers back to life and it's this one. Oh, I remember this guy. He's an asshole. Um, no horse. No. You got the wrong guy. Uh, here, I wanted here's his the brother. Good, here's his the brother. Good brother. Good, yeah. yeah, you know the one who actually fires a gun. The one who knows how to fight and all that. Why don't you bring him back to life? But the horse is like, eh. Like, yeah, no, for, I'm, I'm set on this guy. Yeah, for some reason he insists that John Reed is the one that brought back. Not, you know, well, the one who has a wife and child at home who would, would probably miss him and probably need him to support them. But whatever. So, John is brought back to life. And according to Tonto, because he has been to the other side and back, that, I guess, makes him immortal. 
or at least unable to die. Like, the movie's never clear about this. He can get hurt. We yeah. know that. Yeah, we later yeah. on see him actually get shot by an arrow, and even though it hurts him, it doesn't kill him or, like, really injure him in any way. But, like but I said... But then again, it was in his shoulder. So. Even so, yeah. like... You, you hit an artery, you're fucking dead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Either way, it's like... It's, like I said, it's unclear, but basically it's a story of a ranger who was brought back to life and now ha is immortal and uses his immortality to seek justice. Or at least that's what I thought the movie was about, because it actually takes a very long time to get to that point. Because while John Reed does want to seek justice for the murder of his brother and all the rangers, He's still insisting on not shooting the men, and still not killing them, just bringing them in to be processed. Mm -hmm. And Tonto, because he had seen a vision that he would be with one of the rangers who was brought back to life to help him fulfill his own personal quest, he reluctantly goes along with him. So. Well, he thinks that he's going to get justice, so... It's, it's his whole thing. There's a whole yeah. big story with Tom. Yeah, the rest of the movie at this point just becomes them seeking out the bad guys. Mm. And honestly, I have a hard time keeping straight exactly what happens with which characters. because There are it, some characters we don't even remember the names of. Right. Like, the first thing they do is because the one ranger that betrayed them gave John, like, this flyer for, like, a burlesque house, they decide to start there. Which apparently Tonto frequents. Mm hmm So, yeah, they go there, and there's, like, a group of, like, Presbyterians who are all, like, protesting the house, because, you know, religious mm -hmm. people are like that. Yeah, they're in kind of, like, the whole movie almost. Yeah, and they're pretty annoying. Yeah. So... They go inside, they talk to the head of the house. Played you know. by Helena Bob and Carter. Mm -hmm. And uh, at first the scene really goes nowhere. All it does is to show that she... Gold is, I mean, silver is evil. Yeah, it shows that uh, the, bad, like, the bad guys who had apparently have come to the burlesque paid her with a lump of silver. Like, they don't really know what it is at first, but it is established that it is later on that it is silver. And... Uh, she real and when they mention that they're looking for Butch, then she realizes, oh, why didn't you say so? I'll help you take that motherfucker down. Because one of the things about her character, like the only really memorable memorable thing I remember about her is she has this fake porcelain leg, and it's not just like a fake leg. Like she apparently had modified it into being a gun, with the barrel shooting out of her heel. And like launching the trigger like right at her hip, so all she's do is cock her hip and then pew. And she has a gripe against Butch Cassidy because apparently, being the sick motherfucker that he is, he apparently took off her leg and destroyed her career as a ballerina. So she tells the she tells them what she knows about them, like where they might be located. But unfortunately, they're run out of the burlesque by the religious fanatics before they can learn anything else. So, meanwhile, you have, well, there, there's a couple things going on. Like, you have, I guess, the, the owner of the railroad is, you know, he's getting ready to, uh, to make a big presentation about the railroad and, you know, that, uh, you know, he has all this nitroglycerin packed into uh, one of the cars just, you know, for safekeeping. Mm -hmm. For God knows what he's gonna do, um, and yeah, he's trying to finish building the railroad. Yeah, we're we're not even gonna sugarcoat it. You pretty much know from the moment that he steps on screen that he is a bad guy. He's going to be an antagonist, and you know pretty much that when, once you see like the nitroglycerin, you figure who's the real bad guy, and how are these two connected? Well, let's put it this we'll, way. We'll get back to that. Let's put it this way. If you ever watched, if you watched Rango, you know where, what this character's going to do. So, mm. you know where the story is going. Yeah. So, so, and also then you have uh, Dan's wife and child who are, you know, they're, they're working at their home. 
And then they hear the, the ground shaking and they're like, oh crap, it's a raid! They get inside and they prepare for fighting and turns out you see like a bunch of outlines of people on horses and they skin I would assume the former slave because I think this is a uh, 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 post Civil War. Right. Yeah. Well, basically, so. they're caught up in an Indian attack, and yeah. they try to fight them off, but they're quickly overwhelmed, and then they're kidnapped. Yeah. But as uh, as the Lone Ranger and Tonto get there, and Tonto looks over the scene, he realizes, hey, this is an Indian attack, because this doesn't have the traditional signs of an Indian attack. They usually would, uh, like we said earlier. Uh, his tribe would usually trade for things rather than just steal. So, not to mention that uh, one thing I noticed is like a, one of the big things with Indians is that they tend to scalp their victims. In this case, they just cut their throats. So, so and as it is revealed, it's really Butch's men that are uh, disguised as uh, Comanches. And, you know, they're fucking shit up just so, you know, just, just for the chaos of it. And they're, you know, essentially looking to break the, the trade, the, the treaty. Yeah, reasons will be explained yeah. later. Um, but, so like freaking, uh, John, who sucks at firing guns, uh, he makes this shot, and it like ricochets off of everything, hits uh, a big, uh, like a pulley, I guess, mm -hmm. and a load-bearing thing drops down on two of the fake Comanches, and it like crushes their, crushes skulls. their skulls. Yeah. In carnage. <laughs> and like there's this one like they leave one survivor of uh, of the attack and he sees this he's like okay this guy is crazy let's not even uh, beat around the bush with this he's like he's he's crazy and he's reveling in all the mischief that he's causing yeah because inadvertently uh, di like, inadvertently John's creating like this sort of mythos about him because first of all, uh, all the rangers are supposed to be dead. The crew knows this because they killed them all off themselves. However, he shows up, you know, showing off his, uh, his badge. And on top of that, he, like, somehow manages to survive a burning barn, manages to escape off the roof on a horse, and then takes out two guys with one bullet. And... And they actually, at one point, they even believe that he's uh, he's actually the ghost of Dan, come back from the dead to get revenge for you know the guy ripping his fucking heart out. And I so, think they they uh, that John gets wind of this, and he's like, he actually goes with it. Well, hey, why yeah. not? <laughs> you know, so, put the yeah. fear of God into your uh, yeah. <laughs> into your uh, enemies. <laughs> so, kind of forget. I think uh, they go to the silver. Uh, no, they have the uh, the wife. Um, in the middle of the desert. And she, yeah, the yeah. wife and son is captured by the bad guys, and even though, like, at first being held hostage, but then, like, they piss off Butch and he's about to kill them, and then, and after hearing about the Lone Ranger, he decides, eh, I'm gonna kill him, I don't need this shit. So he tells the guy who, like, betrayed his friends to go kill them, but the guy ends up betraying them and lets the, the mom and son go anyway, but they don't get far and the guy is killed for his good deed you know, his redemption, I guess mm. you can call it. And, yeah, they're kind of out of the movie for a while. <laughs> uh, as for... Well, this also kind of leads to a bit of a plot point in which um, they are in Comanche territory. They're in Comanche territory in the, the middle of the desert, and, uh, you know, they they stumble across railroad tracks in the sand. Yeah, that really yeah. confused me. Like, first of all, like, I, we see this desert. It is one of those, like, big, hilly, very sandy deserts. There is no way in hell you can build a railroad on that. 
because there's no yep. solid ground for at least a couple feet. Yet somehow, it's there. Somehow, and as they're looking at it, they end up getting captured by the Kamachis. And they're brought in before the tribe, and conveniently, turns out the leader knows English, so that's good for them. And he's, and, uh, you know, Lone Ranger's trying to, like, tell, tell them, like, we mean you no harm, you know, we're looking for these kidnapped individuals, we're looking for these bad guys and stuff, and, you know, Tonto told me this, and then the guy like ends up telling... Like we said, the Comanche know Dan. Right, it They're turns the out the Comanche... the pendant. Yeah, the Comanche yeah. knew his brother, because his brother had all those trips to the Indian Territory where everyone thought that, you know, he was fighting the Indians, he actually had struck a peace with them, saying, like, hey, I will make sure that nobody harms your tribe so long as you don't attack my people. Something like that. But then, unfortunately, Dan gets killed, and then attacks start happening, so the Indians think that he betrayed them, hence why... They're gonna go to war. Right. And, like, John is trying to argue with them, and... You know, he's saying, you know, all these things that Tonto told him, and the Comanche chief just basically, like, he gives him the backstory of Tonto. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah. Tonto's crazy. Yeah. As if we didn't know that, that, that That's basically what it culminates in, but there, there's more to it than that. It's, yeah. it's, it's more like these two guys essentially drove him to madness. Yeah, when Tonto was a kid, he he rode out in the middle of the desert, and he found these two white guys just passed out. So he saves their lives by bringing them to his tribe and nursing them back to health. You'd think that would be, you know, they would be grateful for that. However, they... spot they, silver in the water. Right. And believing that, you know, the Indians might be hoarding it, they start threatening them, saying, where did you get the silver from? And Tonto, you know, at first he doesn't tell them, but then they say, hey, we'll give you this shiny watch if you tell us where the silver came from. He's like, okay. So he does that. He leads them to the mouth of the river that comes from this cave that is filled with silver. So... Or silver paint. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, it's really fake looking silver. So... Yeah, they find the silver... And you think that all the, oh yeah, they'll just take what they need and then they'll probably like come back for more later or they'll bring a posse with them to mine the silver, but no. They decide, hey, let's kill all the guys that helped us. That way they can't tell anybody about the silver mine. So yeah, we get a nice scene of all the Indians being killed. Like, it, like you think all they would have to do is just kill the kid. And I thought that's what they did at first. I thought that they shot Tonto in the back of the head or something and he somehow survived. But instead they leave the kid but go straight for the village and just wipe out everyone. Like they shoot every single member of the tribe. Just freaking genocide on them. They even killed Tonto's bird. What the fuck? <laughs> so from then on... Tonto was bent on revenge. Mm -hmm. And remember, there were two men. It wasn't just uh, a butch. There was another. Alright, so... But you, like so that, we said, so you pretty much know who it is. <laughs> so yeah, they... So yeah, after that, um, even though the even though the Comanche accepts uh, Lone Ranger's offer, saying that you know he will uphold his brother's promise and everything, uh, they still want to do. They still kind of want to punish them for going into their territory in the first place and bury them up to their necks in the ground. <laughs> and despite uh, John's protests, you know that they'll all be killed. It's like they pretty much don't care. They know they're going to die anyway. So, why not take out a few white men with them? A lot of foresight these guys yeah. had. <laughs> so, they ride off, and John and Tonto are left in the ground. And while they're there, um, this whole big cavalry of uh, the U.S. Army comes along to attack the Indians. And, and it's pretty much war from then on out. And they completely walk right over uh, Tonto and John. Well, not on them, otherwise they would have killed them. Uh, right over. <laughs> but yeah, um, 
Yes. Yeah, so, so. So, but thankfully you have. Uh, well, you have Deus Ex Machina horse Silver, who comes to save them from even more doom. I gotta say, like this horse is like the highlight of the movie. The horse stole the show. Yeah, because this horse just it shows up at the most random points in the movie, like the most convenient points where like they're about to be killed or something. And horse Ex Machina. And it yeah, and it saves them like, and this thing can, I guess because it's a spirit horse. It is able to go anywhere. It shows up on the roof. And eat it anything. And it shows up on a tree. <laughs> and it, and somehow it has the power to pull Lone Ranger right out of the ground. And eat scorpions. Yes. Scorpions give him his power. <laughs> yeah, no, like, real, like, all of a sudden there's, like, a whole bunch of scorpions come out of the ground and climb all over, uh, you know, Tonto and, uh, and John. And, yeah, obviously that's when the horse shows up and it starts licking the scorpions off and eating them like they're nothing. Yeah. I did not know horses ate scorpions! It's a spirit horse, though. <laughs> so, yeah, they're, they're rescued. And they realize that they have to go to the mouth of the river because... Uh, from what from what they heard, that's where the bad guys plan to go. Because you know, again, th what they want is silver, and that is like the biggest source of silver there is. Yeah. So they've already essentially set up a mine, mm -hmm. and despite the protests of the Chinese miners, uh, they send someone in anyway, who is ambushed. Yeah, because they because they believe that the the cave has been haunted by Indian spirits because again you know the tribe that knew of its location and probably was like protecting it was all killed so it makes sense but in this case you know like I, I kind of compare this to a scene from the uh, Broadway version of Peter Pan in that uh, they believe this one section to be haunted so they keep sending men in who one by one keep getting killed mm. secretly by the hero oh yeah that one <laughs> and the, and, of course, you know, it's Lone Ranger and Tonto who are doing this, and in a final act against the bad guys, they send a cart full of dynamite at them, which I guess kills everyone except for Butch. Yeah. Yeah, because it's a pretty big explosion. Somehow this guy doesn't die, because he apparently can't die. And, and they have him. They have him right there, with a gun in hand, and still... John sticks to his morals and won't kill the guy. Yeah, despite the fact this guy is responsible for the death of his brother and, you know, five other rangers and countless others and is, you know, and is responsible for Tonto's tribe being completely wiped out. And even if shown mercy, would still not uh, let up with any of his actions. He still lets him live. And even Tonto, like, calls him a dumbass for this. And I totally agree with it. And But John, being as stupid as he is, just knocks out Tonto and just ties up the guy to his horse and just takes him back into town. Yeah, I'm sure he's definitely going to go to prison after this. Mm. The movie's, like, what, halfway over? <laughs> Yeah. So they bring him back into town. Uh, the head of the railroad is there, and so is uh, yeah, the wife Rebecca and the son Danny. Yeah, they're on a train. Because apparently uh, they found them wandering in the desert and managed to save them from heat stroke. And he's trying to take care of them and everything. And the guy starts dropping hints that you know he's more involved than he lets on you know saying that hey he who controls the railroad controls the country and it's like oh boy we ever heard this before mm. and of course when when you have uh... john on board and uh... you know they're, they're taking uh... butch into custody yet again we get that Final reveal that everybody already knew. The because two are brothers. The two are brothers. And only that, they are the brothers, the two white guys who screwed over Tonto and his tribe. 
and they and were working together to, uh, you know, uh, frame the Comanches so that they could break the treaty and get their land so that they could build the railroad on it. Yeah, and it's completely freaking obvious given that... You already knew! Yeah, yeah like, you the, already they knew. dropped such big-ass hints. The like, guy is not subtle. At all. Like, the guy says, oh yeah, we finally captured the big bad guy we've been after for years, but rather than, you know, just execute him right away in the place he was caught, we're gonna drag him all the way out here with minimal protection in order to, you know, hang him in front of everybody. Oh, but look, he completely escapes because there was a gun hidden in a compartment right below him. Who put that there? And oh, look, now he's pretending to be an Indian and raiding all these villages, and it looks like he's framing the Indians. Hmm, who would gain... A lot of uh, who would gain an advantage with uh, the Indians being wiped out. There's train tracks in the Comanche territory desert somehow. How is this connected? So this is, yeah. About as subtle as a boot to the face. Yeah, and of course, Ugh. of course, Butch escapes again, and he, and you know, he kind of kidnaps. Sort of kidnaps the mother and son again, and the guy, after you know, doing the typical bad guy thing where he reveals his entire plan, thinking that the good guy is in no way gonna defeat him, you know, they try to kill the Lone Ranger, but that doesn't quite work. But they still capture him anyway, and then they even get the general of the cavalry on their side because it is revealed to the general that you know. It is Butch that is responsible for the attacks, not the Indians. And if this were, if the word got out that the Indians were actually innocent, and that and he, that he'd killed all these innocent people. Yeah, he apparently like massacred a dozen tribes because he believed that they had genuinely attacked these towns. Word got out that that happened, he'd be seen as a mass murderer, and that would, you know cause a serious blow to his reputation, to his status, to everything. So, of course, not wanting that to happen, he decides, Oh, hey, uh, yeah, that never, no, the, that never happened, uh, Butch didn't do it, the Indians actually did it, uh, I bet it was this guy, this guy in the mask right here, yeah, he's responsible, let's kill him. Yeah. So then, that leads up to the final act. So, you have... You have the the mother and the son being held against their will by this guy. Because the guy, it one of the big things that tipped me off in the beginning that, that that you know the railroad guy was a bad guy was the fact that he was in love with the love interest. And I'm like, like his very Ugh. first scene in, he's like f essentially flirting with her. Yeah, because her husband's away all the time, you know, doing ranger stuff. So of course he's not home, and she feels a tad neglected. But the guy keeps, like, buying her cool stuff. He's and... even trying to get in good with the sun, too. Yeah. So, so yeah, he has the, he has the, the wife and son. Uh, Lone Ranger is being set up to be uh, killed by Execution mm -hmm. Squad. By and, firing. And the Railroad Tycoon is getting ready for the big premiere of the train tracks and is going into a meeting with the other heads of the railroad department to uh, discuss his terms. And that's what, and he, I want to say that he kind of pulls a joker in what he does. I remember from the original Batman movie when he goes to his other, the other crime bosses and he ends up killing one, or like at least like injuring one of the head guys and saying like I'm taking over this now. I have a ton shit ton of money. I can buy you all out. You all work for me now. <laughs> That's basically what he does. He reveals that he has all this shit ton of silver, and as soon as he gets to California, he'll be rich as hell, and he's gonna like fire all of them unless they join him. He even shoots the guy in the the head guy in the ass, <laughs> or his glorious. Well, that that happens a little later. Anyway. Yeah, but, um... Is it, yeah, so... So, yeah, like, of course, you know, mwahaha, ha, ha, mm -hmm. bad guy's about to win, but Tonto to the rescue! You, yeah, using this, uh, well, Oh, well, it's Tonto and the Comanche. Right. Yeah. Yeah, um, Tonto manages to, uh... manage to, uh, free Lone Ranger, thankfully, like, through this whole series of like, 
I can't even describe it because like so many like he, things lead up he, from one he thing manages to, the other. to like push a rail uh, like a freight car in front of Lone Ranger just as they're about to fire uh, the execution squad's about to fire and uh, and it's so inadvertently saves the mother from being killed. Yeah, the guy was gonna shoot her. Pushes, uh, he takes like a, a, a small rail push car and like uh, takes uh, Lone Ranger out of danger. But meanwhile, the Comanche are up on a hill and they're firing arrows, much like uh, 300. Mm -hmm. Our arrows will block out the moon. <laughs> mm -hmm. Then we will fight in well all the shape. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, so. so Lone Ranger is saved by Tonto. The two make their escape. Unfortunately, as it, the cavalry and the Indians go at it, they mostly end up killing each other. Like I think mm. some of the cavalrymen survive, but it's pretty much established that all of the Indians end up dying, yeah. which is what they pretty much expected to happen anyway. And somehow, uh, Tonto and the Lone Ranger get themselves stuck in the mine. And uh, they they throw like a thing of gasoline and uh, light a match, throw it into where they the the Lone Ranger and Tonto are hiding, and they know that it's coming. So they like they run out. The explosion happens. They jump into like the river. Right. They are, make their escape. Yeah. So, so after all this happens. Um, they're, they're John, down by the newly constructed yeah, viaduct. John yeah. finally realizes that he's been a dumbass this whole time because yeah. he realizes the men that he thought were upholding the law and who were, you know, the the good guys, the one who would, you know, serve justice to the bad guys, had really been evil all along and have completely betrayed him in every way possible. He realizes that his whole look outlook on that was wrong. Like, I mean... Nothing against, you know, people who don't believe in using guns and stuff. I mean, I understand, especially, like, in the case of Batman, where something like that caused, like, oh, something horrible in your life. You know, that's understandable, and I can understand, you know, wanting to do things through a peaceful means, or like the way Martin Luther did, or Gandhi. But, in this case, you're when you're, like, out in the Wild West, where really it's the biggest and quickest gun that wins, and is the difference between living and dying. It is like, and, and, and you are facing somebody who you know has no reservations, no about, remorse, no remorse, and who will even exploit the death. Like you save him, he'll still go back and do what he does. He has no nothing for you. Like in that case, you know, all bets are off. Yeah. Kill this motherfucker on sight before Don't, he kills again. Like we said, because they uh, once again, because John let him live despite all the shit that happened before. He, you know, the guy goes on is the re is because he's the reason why this entire tribe is now dead. He's the reason why all these cavalry guys are dead. Some people are just too dangerous to be kept alive. Mm-hmm. I, I can understand if you want to be moral to them, but let's face it, if... It's not if, worth yeah, it. Yeah, if, if there's people. a way to... If death is the only thing that is going to stop them, then you're going to have to kill them. It even goes back to Man of Steel. I don't get why people have such issue with this. It's, it's the same exact moral issue. This guy is about to kill a bunch of people, and there's really... He's already really, killed a yeah, bunch of people. he's already killed a bunch of people, and he's going to kill more. In fact, you the only possible way you are going to stop him is if you kill him. Like, I, like, in some rare cases, there is a way around that type of thing. Like, Avatar The Last Airbender is a good example, but if... You but don't this, have this supernatural not... powers if you're in a real life situation where the only way to save everyone is by the death of this one individual. You do it. Yeah. You you just like screw all that morality crap. Just yeah. do it. Let's face it. I mean, you could shoot him and paralyze him or something, but he's got a lot of influence. And he's still going to to get his way no matter what. So he cannot, just cannot be kept alive. The only way to stop him 
is to end his life. And thankfully, John realizes this <sighs> and says that, you know, if this is the type of man that represents the law, then I'd rather be an outlaw. And Tonto is finally relieved, you know, that he has this guy seeing his way. So now it's time to construct this whole big plot in order to wipe out these three individuals before they cause even more death and destruction. So yeah, he pretty much, as, as you said earlier... As I mentioned, the guy goes to the meeting with all the other uh, railroad tycoons, you know, says that, Mwahaha, I'm going to buy you all out, you better join me or I'm going to kill all keep of you. Keep the watch. Right. <laughs> and... And he shoots Stephen Root in the back. <laughs> in the gluteus. <laughs> And like, they're ready to, they're ready to, you know, they're premiering the railroad. They're going to send it, the train, along with its shit ton of silver in the back toward California, along with uh, Butch hidden inside as well. But, uh, uh, but hmm. however, their plans go awry. As that, Tonto and Lone Ranger steal one of the trains. Mm-hmm. Well, I think it's just the train, right? There's only one train? There's two trains. There's two trains. I one, well, they're going in, like, opposite directions. It's okay. weird. But they're, like, I guess they're both stationed there to be, um, to, to, to be, you know, uh, display. Mm. Now, as we said earlier, uh, I, I was trying to say earlier, they were down by the viaduct, the newly constructed viaduct, when they uh, had when Tonto and Lone Ranger make up, and they're attempting to uh, blow it up, and apparently it fails. Um, so, they but they're still going that way anyway, and they're so one the 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 bad guys take the other train, and they have this huge elaborate fight sequence aboard the train. Like, we can't even properly describe it because so much shit is going on at it's once. It's just like a stunt show that gets drawn out on a moving train. It's like, yeah, you gotta you deal with tunnels, you gotta deal with moving things, you gotta jump from one cart to the other, you gotta shoot people who are in the car, in the train, across from you. It is so over the top it stops being funny, and it's you're just like, really? Th I, this is just too much. I mean, I'll admit, I actually did find it cool, because this is the type of thing when you think of when you think of a western. You think of a great train robber. You think of the good guy chasing the bad guy over the top of the carts and stuff, you know, shooting each other from across. Like, it has all that stuff, which is cool. And even to top it off, they do all this to the theme from the original Lone mm. Ranger show, which I thought was pretty cool. But, but, like, but like I said, there, it there goes is a on. point at which your your suspension of disbelief is shattered, and you're just like, enough already. This is like it goes on for a really long time, and it, it is so chaotic. Like you have no idea who is on what train, who is going up against who. You know, you don't know who's dying, who's staying alive. It, it is like, it really gets discombobulating at points, like, because you're trying to, like, you're trying to shift your focus to what, you know, like, what what the main event's going on, what's the side event that's going on, you know, who should you follow, but you're following, like, Why are there two eight different tracks characters. alongside each other when it was, like, one single track earlier? It just, it gets, there's, there's a switch. Ah. It, said, it gets really insane, but, and, and there's even a few stunts, like I said, are really hard to oh. believe that... The, like that they, none of the actors had actually sustained injuries yeah. doing. Like, they get on top of like one of those mail carriers that swings around and manage to like kick a guy in the face and then go around and kick him again. And it's just... Uh. And there's this one part where, uh, where Tonto is on this one train. He has to get on this other train, the one that's carrying the silver. And he does so because apparently the trains like cross each other like over a bridge and under a bridge. He jumps off the one train and onto the other train moving on the bottom and lands on the silver rocks. And, and like, somehow everyone does not like, sustain Ow! an injury. He does not wince. He does not sustain any injuries. And it's just like, okay, this is like getting ridiculous yeah. here. But, Absolutely ridiculous. But yeah, let's let's just sum it up. So, 
Cavalry Guy and Butch are both killed in the same fashion. Because what? Because a bunch of the carts end up getting taken off because, of course, one of the trains had to actual actually had passengers on it, which they had to, you know, of course, you know, separate from everything else. And another one was taken off as well because that was where one of the big battles was taking place between Lone Ranger and Butch. And of course, you know, like I I was thinking that. I was thinking maybe Lone Ranger's finally going to shoot this guy between the eyes, but he uses another means of killing him in that he just lets him stay on the train as it's getting hit by the other oncoming train that has the captain on it, and the collision ends up killing them both. So those two are wiped out. The last one is the Railroad Tycoon who goes up against Tonto, and he tries to shoot him, but gunshot of his hand by Lone Ranger, who apparently cannot miss now because he's, that's one of his spirit walker powers. Miss apparently. And Tonto had gives him back the, gives him back the watch yeah. that the guy had given him all those years ago saying bad, bad trade, trade and gets off the train because apparently he set the train to keep going off the bridge which it turned out did explode. And the guy ends up careening down off the bridge into the water and is crushed underneath all the silver that he wanted so bad. So. Symbolism! <laughs> so yeah. Everyone's taken out now, Railroad's destroyed, and Lone Ranger's being held as a hero to all. But With with the newly reconstructed uh, uh, marching band. <laughs> right. <laughs> and, but a, here's a and a canid uh, Steven Root. And then, I d really did not understand this, like... I assume that they wanted him to stay and be like their new sheriff of the town since you know all the rangers are now dead. And they even give him like a watch to symbolize that, but instead he says, nope, I still got work to do. And then he just, you know, bids, bids the wife and son who had gotten rescued in the whole commotion of the railroad scene and says like, okay, I saved you guys, but you know, I'm not going to stick around, so slew ya. And he just walks off, you know, to join Tonto into riding aimlessly around the desert. Because, you know, every episode of Lone Ranger had to end with, you know, the good guy riding off into the sunset. And, you know, he decides to name his horse Silver for really no reason. Just other than to keep in continuity. Right. And the two go off to have more adventures. So... And what do we get with the payoff of, uh... Of uh, the, the the kid in uh, yeah, San Francisco. Like I really wanted to leave this out until later, just because this is so unnecessary in the grand scheme of the entire movie. But it unfortunately is the very first thing you notice, and the, it is so damn confusing. This entire movie is told in a flashback narrative, in that Tonto apparently is an exhibit now in like in like a fair or something he's a like, noble savage like and the thing is like they set everything up the way like it's all like you know fake stuff it's all taxidermy and all that but somehow he's real and he reveals himself to this kid and it, who's dressed up as the lone ranger because i'm assuming by then you know he's like a legendary figure by that point and he ends up telling the entire story of the lone ranger to the kid you know, like the periodically they flash back to the two of them. You know, whenever an inconsistency comes up, and that's the funny thing. This movie points out its own plot holes, but offers no explanation for them, and it's played off as like a comedic moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's a little too much comedy in here, if you ask me. Yeah, so yeah. Tonto ends up telling him the entire story. You know, the kids all inspired and everything, and then Tonto. For some reason, by the end of it, he's dressed up in a suit. He and he puts a top hat on top of his bird, and, and you know he like, tells and he tells the kid, you know, never take off the mask. And the kid's, you know, asking, you know, how how am I supposed to believe all of what you say? And I think, what does he hand him over the the badge or the watch? I think he hands him the badge. Mm. I guess one of the things, and then but, while the kid is, you know, distracted. Tonto's disappeared. But his crow, which has magically come back to life, flies away. And the kid, you know, puts down the mask. He's like, never take off the mask. And that's, that's how... That's it. Like, got it. I... 
really did want to like this film. Like I said, it's an interesting concept. You know, you have a supernatural cowboy come back from the dead and, you know, he goes to serve justice. I mean, I, I'm kind of thinking back to, like, that. who's that one DC character? Like, uh, Oh, Jonah Hex. Yeah, like Jonah yeah. Hex, like, you know, sort of like that. You know, someone who can't die. <laughs> but they just did so many things wrong and like I said, the narrative, the narrative right off the bat should have not been added in. That should have been cut completely. It should have been told as a straight up story. Like, if they had to do a narrative, at least have it take place in the same yeah. time period. At, at least, least have there be some reason why he needs to tell the kid this, why the kid is important to the whole of the story. It, Otherwise, it, it's like, why even bother? Yeah, it just... Yeah. It, like, listen, that could have been cut completely. Um, there's also the pa the the pacing. It is so damn slow. Because, like, they try to build up everything. But it's like, how long are we in, like, half an hour to 45 minutes before they finally reveal the Lone Ranger? Sounds about right. Like, that's how long yeah. it felt to me. Like, they even threw in, like, a big mega action pack scene before the guy became the Lone Ranger. They could have cut a good 10 minutes off of this movie if they'd gotten rid of the San Francisco kid. Yeah, because like this thing yeah. was like 2 hours and 40 minutes long and that is like, that is way yeah. too long, especially for a concept as simple as this. And they make it so, like, and I want to say overly complicated but at the same time, it's something we've seen before. Yeah. Cause like I said, I've seen Rango and this, in a way, is almost the same exact plot. Yeah. And much like Man of Steel, there we go again. Um, we have the whole thing where they keep showing us flashbacks uh, to things we probably didn't need flashbacks to. Like yeah. like I was saying with the newly constructed uh, viaduct, uh, they show that it's it fails, that the explosion fails, so you're led to believe that they're just going wherever. Maybe they'll blow it up on their way. But as it turns out, it's already been blown up. And they show like a really quick flashback to say, hey, it actually did work. There's this one flashback that really baffled me. And like, they show this scene of Lone Ranger and Tonto robbing a bank at the very beginning of the movie. Which throws like, the kid off completely. It throws the audience yeah. off completely. I'm like, wait, did we, did the movie skip or something? Like, am I watching Man of Steel again? We're, the, we're leaping in between time periods without any established, you know, transition. I'm thinking, oh, this, they're going to tell the story of the Lone Ranger when he was a kid, how he was inspired to, you know, uh, how he was inspired to become, you know, a figure of justice or something like that. But no, this is, this completely is not the case at all. Completely different story. And it's, and like there's this guy and I'm like, is he supposed to be Tonto? Is he some other random Indian? I even and then thought, it goes to that scene in the bank and it's like, what is going on? I even thought when he was pulling out, he starts like pulling out the clothes randomly. I'm like, wait a minute, is he Tonto or is he the Lone Ranger? I just, I don't know. Like, it it was... says in the description that I read that he is, it is in fact Tonto, just a much older Tonto. But it's just like, you get no sense of like, time frame of, you know, what takes place in what time period until they finally get into the main story. And then they actually, you know, give you that time period and where the everything is taking place. And then after that, you're like, okay, so this is the flat, so this is the modern time, this is the flashback. Okay, now we got it. But, like, that was such a horrible setup. That was, you do not do that. Like, I've seen movies do that, like, do a flashback sort of thing, like, off the top of my head, Princess Bride. But at least you know what takes place in modern time, what takes place in the actual story. With this, the time periods, I'm sorry, are too close. They're like, there's nothing distinguishing the two. There really isn't. Actually, if anything, they're too far apart. I honestly could not tell the difference because everything takes place in this one fair. So mm. you, it, there's nothing to indicate that this is the 1930s. And well, well there's electricity. That's the only yeah. thing. But there's electricity. Uh, the Golden Gate Bridge is being built. I guess, yeah. but it's like it's you don't even. I didn't even notice any of that because yeah. uh, you know I'm just waiting for the story to begin, and you know you kind you tend to overlook that sort of stuff. Mm. 
So there's that problem, and then there's the problem with the characters. Like, I honestly, like the horse was my favorite. Character. <laughs> The, like, the horse is the highlight. Like, so, so one of my friends even said he reminds him of Maximus from Tangled. Except, you know, he's not as, like, hardcore determined to bring them into justice as the leads are. He's just, he shows up when it's convenient and he does things like, in a stop. hilariously awesome way. Stop, y'all. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. But other than that, I just didn't care for any of the characters. Like, I really do not like the Lone Ranger. I'm sorry. I mean, he he, he looks whiny. he looks the part. You know, he's yeah. actually quite handsome and like he I get he's well acted enough. Like I can sort of believe him when he's like so strong in conviction. I just the character is just so mind-bogglingly stupid. And some of the interactions are incredibly dull to the point where you completely lose focus like I was just thinking on like how many times did uh, did the Lone Ranger and Dan's wife interact and like they everybody thinks they're gonna be in love but yeah those it's like why okay he's he's there the 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 father the brother-in-law he's the uncle so he's got stakes in this, but everybody seems to think that he's gonna be, you know, the lover. So it's like, and, and then in the end he isn't. He just, he you know, is affectionate, but he's like, railroad's moving west so I gotta move with it. Uh, and yeah, but like, like I said, they have like no chemistry whatsoever, and if they do it's so dull that you can't even pay attention. Like, I don't even understand, because, like, the whole setup of the relationship is that Lone Ranger was in, love with the, was in love with the wife when they were children, but for whatever reason that is never given, he never pursued her, even though it was obvious that they both like each other. So, she, so when he left, she ended up marrying his brother instead, who, as we see through their interaction, she doesn't really seem to love that much. It's like, ah, uh, you're second best, I guess you'll do. Everyone in this film is two-dimensional. There is not, like, like I will, anything. I will give a love interest this. At least she tries to, like... Yeah, at least she's she, got some fight in her. At least she tries to defend herself. She's not, you know, the... the she's not the, da damage. the dumbass in distress. Yeah, like, yeah. she doesn't sit around just waiting to be rescued or anything. Like, you see her, like, shoot a gun. You see her, like, spit in a guy's face. You see her fight, like, go through, like, all these means to escape and try to save her son and everything, and it's admirable, but she herself, other than the fact that, you know, she can fight back, is not that compelling a character. Yeah. There's really nothing else to her other than she wants to bone her husband's brother. Helena Bob and Carter's character is interesting, but she's hardly in the movie enough to justify really being there, aside from, like, really two scenes. Yeah, like uh, it's she's she's a friend of Tonto, and she blows shit up. Yeah, but, she really has no purpose being yeah. in the movie other than to give them like this one hint of a lead. Yeah, and it's like, you know, ju and just you know to look cool because, like I said, she has that leg which does you know make her design pretty awesome. Because yeah. you know, how often do you see someone with a with you know a wooden leg that it also doubles as a gun? Like I might have liked to see her more, you know, mm -hmm. and more fleshed out. Because, like I said, she's actually an interesting character. Yeah, like, she has a backstory and everything, but... Yeah, but it's, it like, is... it's, it's there and done in, like, five minutes. And, like, and then there's the bad guys, and... Like I said, two-dimensional yeah. and predictable. Yeah, you, and they, they kind of, like, they kind of fit three different stereotypes. You have the evil bad guy, the guy who is just evil for the sake of being evil, like I said, with the whole heart eating and everything. You have, you know, the business tycoon who mm. resorts to, like, you know, sneaky measures in order to accomplish what he does, but you still see him coming from a mile mm. away. Even when and you don't know that the two of them are brothers, you still know they're in cahoots. Yeah, and then you have the opportunist, the the captain, like I said, he does not start off as a threat, but then once he realizes that his own reputation is at risk, he switches sides on a dime. So, 
so like I said, like they there's nothing They're all there's, cardboard cutouts. Like you've seen these guys in Westerns. You you really have. Yeah. Like I said, I've already seen two of those characters in Rango. Like that that is how predictable. Tonto probably could have been a little more interesting. He he's a character, but He's still two-dimensional. He's, he's Johnny Depp. Yeah, he's Johnny no Depp playing how, Johnny Depp. No matter how you go about it, he's Johnny Depp. Yeah. Like, you know his performance. You've seen it before. He can change the way he speaks. He can dress in all these silly elaborate outfits, but you know it's him. Like, I never want, like... I, I This is probably the most I've ever referred to him by his character, aside from Jack Sparrow. Because usually whenever I see a movie involving Johnny Depp, I don't call him by his character name. I just call him Johnny Depp. I'm sorry to say that, but yeah, I mean, I I love you, Johnny. You are the love of my life, but I, honestly, you got you need to expand a little mm -hmm. more. You need to really like not. You, you need, need to, to be someone your, else. You need to get out of your comfort zone, please, <laughs> please. <laughs> You're still hot though. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, uh, and, and here's the thing: like the whole dynamic between Tonto and Lone Ranger, like my. Uh, my friend pointed this out. He says it actually reminds him a lot of uh, the Green Hornet in that... The sidekick is more... The sidekick is more effective than the actual hero. That he actually does a lot more work than the hero does and is actually, you know, a more compelling character in a way. And I kind of agree because that's what it seems like. Because you, you do want... Because one of the things with the, the character does is uh, he calls... He calls uh, the Lone Ranger Kimosabi. Wrong brother. That's what it means in his language. And he even, he continues to call him that even to the end. And in a way, I kind of agree. He's like, why didn't you bring back the competent brother, the one who knows what to do instead because of this Because this movie guy? would be over too quickly. Yeah. But then again, on the other hand, you could still have a competent uh, character and still sort of drag it out. Yeah. But then again, that would be a better movie. True. I mean, I guess they wanted to have the whole underdog thing yeah. going for them, but it's just, like I said, Lone Ranger's not com a compelling character no. at all. He's like, you at want least him, not in this movie. You want him know. to shut up and just do what he's told. Because, like I said, that that whole mentality has it's like that's good if you are in an environment that allows you to do that type of thing or if you know that it's been effective before but you're out in the middle of an area that has just recently been populated that really has no law and order just yet so you need to take drastic measures before you can enforce you know the peaceful methods so yeah like a lot of that is what really ruined this movie and like i said that I, and then like as and you the action like, as you notice, we were really muddled when it came to, like, a lot of the details and a lot of the, you know, a lot of, like, how the storyline was going along. Because, like I said, after, up, after the point when he is brought back to life, all of these storylines are just so intermingled and so jumbled. You really have, is there, there's no linear storyline. Mm -hmm. Like, it is so like jumbled together you have like really no idea like like if like i said we were trying so hard to relay this story yeah. in a straight manner and even we had trouble with that yeah. it is like it and that is bad like i understand if you want to have a like maybe two or three at the most storylines going on at yeah. once but at least do it in a way that is memorable that will stick out to the audience that they can explain it you know on in a simple way. And essentially... But, yeah. like, heck, Lord of the Rings did this better. And essentially, like we said earlier, the film points out its own inconsistencies and, you know, whenever it's a, it's supposed to be addressed, whenever, like, the kid asks about it, they essentially do the, uh, the equivalent of dangling keys in front of you. So either by distracting you with some action sequence or an unnecessary amount of comedy. And while this comedy re comic relief is a good thing, this has far too much of it. And then, like I said... Yeah, it's like scenes that, you know, I don't think was intended for us to laugh at. We were like bawling we were bawling over. Out. 
Because, like, I, we saw this with, like, ten other people, and we were all, like, certain scenes that, like I said, were probably meant to be taken seriously or not meant to be laughed at. We were just, like, in tears from laughing so much. Yeah. And, essentially, the film kind of gives its action scenes away too soon or at the wrong times like or it, it, it just basically the action is wrong like you have the train the, the, the beginning with the train uh, coming off the rails because it's run it's they, they, the controls have been sabotaged and you know so they have this whole thing where they're trying to stop the train, trying to kill people, but rescue people at the same time. And then it all culminates with like them falling off the, the train, and the train is off the rails, and it's about to hit them. And it's like, you gave it away too soon. Mm -hmm. And not to mention, you had way too much going on. That's it. It goes back to the pacing. The pacing yeah. of this movie is just awful. Like, it's like... It's like setup, action scene, mm. and filler, 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 action, 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 action. Go back action, to California. Action. Action, filler, action, filler, action, filler, action, filler, action. filler, filler, filler. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And like I said, the the the, the climax is, it's I think, what fuck. what completely ruins the movie. It could have been better, but they just it was too much. It was like I said, just I personally did enjoy it. At like, first. At first. Yeah. It's just, I just think it goes on too long and it's too and it just, discombobulated to really. It just becomes keep track too of big of a stunt show for its own good and completely loses all meaning and it just takes you out of the film entirely. Yeah. And then the it, it's just. Yeah. It's not all that good. But. In all honesty, I was expecting worse. Yeah, because I mean, I heard reviews about this beforehand saying just how god awful this movie was. Yeah, I heard like it was getting like one and a half star. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it wasn't making a lot of money. So naturally, you walk in expecting the worst. It was better than expected. Right. Like, but not by a lot. Yeah, it's just, it was a big mess. And actually, from what I read online, is that the script like there was like an original script that went through like this drastic rewrite but that ended up filling the movie with a ton of plot holes mm. which they then had to rewrite again to fix but they still end up leaving a lot of the plot holes in which again we said they tried to explain away like in a comedic effect sort of to distract the audience from them so yeah i'm i'm sorry like i i really cannot recommend this film like I can't recommend this film for two types of people. I cannot recommend it for small children because while this is western, it is extremely gritty. Like I said, you see a guy eating someone's heart. You do not want to show children that. That is how freaking gritty it gets. And you know, you see people getting shot and everything. And like I said, and not only that, but there are such long dull moments in between action scenes that that, that their attention will just be gone. And this is a two and a half hour movie, which leads to my the second group of people, people who cannot sit through long movies. Because I'm telling you, like, I saw you were getting antsy in your seat at points. And I was starting to get a little bit too, because I'm thinking, wow, this should not take this long. This should be something that could be told in less than two hours if they just, you know, if they change the pacing a bit, if they change the script and condense things more. So, yeah, do not bring ch young children. Do not go if you do not, if you cannot tolerate two and a half hours. If you have movies. no patience, yeah. Yeah, so, like, it is maybe worth a watch, you know, if you maybe grew up with the original Lone Ranger, or if, you know, you just want to see something with cool action scenes in it, because it does deliver on that. But, other than that, like, I, I cannot call this a good film. I, no. I just, I can't. No, no matter how much effort was put into, you know, all the effects and everything, it just, in terms of story and pacing and narrative and character, it just, it, it falls fails. Flat. Yeah. So, like I said, like, really think about it if you want to see this movie, but other than that, I don't recommend it. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> well, and with that, we will now go right off into the sunset toward our next review.
I'm one sat more. And I'm Cat T Critic. And I owe silver away! Yeah! <laughs>